This episode of the We 670 podcast has been made in collaboration with Pacifica Insurance Underwriters, insuring and assuring the CNMI since 1973. Head over to their website, www.pacificains.com, their Instagram at Pacifica Insurance, or their Facebook at facebook.com slash Pacifica Insurance Underwriters to see how they can help you to secure your peace of mind. Thank you very much to Pacifica Insurance Underwriters for helping us to make this content for you. The following excerpt was taken from History of the Northern Mariana Islands, written by Don A. Farrow. The Chamorros were most often described by the first Westerners as being large people. Considering that the average Spaniard of the time was a little over five feet tall, a Chamorro who stood six feet tall or more would have appeared to be gigantic. One early reporter said of the Chamorros that they are as large as giants and of so great strength that it has actually happened that one of them, while standing on the ground, has laid hold of two Spaniards of good stature, seizing each of them by one foot with his hands, and lifting them thus as easily as if they were two children. Another account said the women were good-looking and delicately formed, and lighter complexioned than the men. The Chamorros were described as healthy people who lived long lives. Several reports state that the Chamorros often lived to be 100 years old and even older. Father Luis de Morales, one of the first Spanish priests in the Marianas, gave the following reasons for Chamorro longevity. 1. From the cradle they are accustomed to the weather. 2. Their frugal existence, which is always the same, does not excite the appetite and encourage them to eat to excess. 3. They exercise by fishing and farming. 4. They live a free and tranquil life without cares, temptations, vexations, or anxieties. The Chamorro's diet was limited but healthful. Their diet included fish, crustaceans, turtles, birds, fruit bats, rice, vegetables, and some fruits. It is interesting to note that the Mariana Islands was the farthest eastward extension into the Pacific of rice growing in pre-contact times. The early inhabitants of islands east of the Marianas did not grow rice. Farm products included rice, ginger, taro, and yams. Fruits included coconuts, bananas, breadfruit, and wild breadfruit nuts. Wild foods were also gathered from the jungle, including wild yams, Polynesian arrowroot, pandanus fruit, and the Federico nut. Meats that were eaten included the large fruit bat, turtles, and possibly birds. When seabirds were nesting, the Chamorros would take and eat their eggs. Fish was a mainstay and was eaten raw or salted and dried. Eels, plentiful in the rivers of Guam and Rhoda, were also eaten. Not until after the Spaniards arrived did the Chamorros begin to eat chicken, pork, beef, and deer meat. Among the crustaceans eaten by the ancient Chamorros were coconut crabs, lobsters, sea crabs, shore crabs, and land crabs. Tools were created to cook certain foods. Earthen ovens were built to cook yams and other starchy foods. Stone mortars and pestles usually made from volcanic rock, were used to prepare food and medicine. Wooden pestles were also made. Large mortars and pestles were used for grinding bulky items or to prepare large amounts of food. These big mortars and pestles could have been centrally located and used by more than one family. The Chamorros made stone cups and knives and scrapers from stone, shell, and bone. Knives and scrapers were important in food preparation, such as removing the burnt skin from roasted breadfruit. Spoons, cups, and ladles were also made from coconuts. Pottery was also needed for food preparation. 
The islands of Saipan, Tinian, and Rhoda have rich deposits of natural clay, as does Guam. The ancient Chamorros knew how to work this clay into many different shapes, dry it, and then fire it so that it would become hard. They made bowls, pots, and possibly even plates from clay. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the We 670 podcast, an exploration of the history, cultures, and lifestyles of the Northern Mariana Islands. My name is Mark, and I'll be your host. And in this episode, I am joined by... What kind of descriptors would you like? I'm always going to open with asking people their de- like what descriptors they want. Yeah. Lady of the land. <laughs> Vegetable warrior. No. No. <laughs> Dairy destroyer. <laughs> No, okay. not destroyer. <laughs> In this episode, I am joined by or joined with my dear friend Lay, aka Elizabeth Tenorio. Hello, Lay. How are Hi. you? I'm good. How are you? I'm okay. <laughs> I'm just I'm as good as I can be right now. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining me for this episode. So before we get into these hard hitting topics. I would just love to know a little bit about you, or I'm sure the audience would love to know a little bit more about you mm-hmm. as a fellow indigenous woman mm-hmm. of the CNMI. Can you just tell us what you think people need to know okay. about you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for having me. My name is Lei. I am a daughter of the Marianas. As you can probably see, I'm a mestiza. I'm half. My mom is born and raised in Guam, but her bloodline is Irish and Scottish. And then my dad is local. A mix of bloods, honestly. Japanese, Spanish, British. Same here, except for the British. (laughs) (laughs) I enjoy hiking, going to the beach. Definitely love being outdoors. Oh, see, so Lady of the Land was very appropriate. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Lady of the Land. Lady of the Land. There we go. I'm currently pursuing uh, a master's degree in nutrition. There so we go. Yeah. that's my latest journey. Um, really excited to get into that. Fantastic. And that is very, very pertinent because in today's or in this particular episode, we're discussing pre colonial indigenous diets or just the foods that were available to us or sustained us at that time and then kind of how it has it has evolved like what we consume and how we consume it mm-hmm. our food culture in general in the CNMI today and what we hope what we hope it will look like in the future because it's um it's interesting <laughs> yeah. to say the least before we get into that I do want to ask just personally like what has your relationship with food like your cultural relationship uh you know CNMI specific experiences with food uh, how's that been for you here like growing up yeah well honestly i mean growing up here there's always big events parties weddings birthdays funerals yes and it always kind of centers around food you know there's always food being shared at, at these events so definitely grew up eating all of our yummy delicacies Love empanada, love the red rice, Mm. the barbecue. I don't remember, you know, really anything strictly taught to us, like as far as nutrition growing up. We basically ate what we wanted. Like my dad loves fish, Mm -hmm. so always having fish, rice, Rice. rice. (laughs) you know, growing up in the Marianas, we ate, you know, different foods. So Mm -hmm. Filipino food, Chinese food, Korean food. So from a young age, you know, we would always go to the Chinese restaurant. Mm. And so I grew up loving bok choy yes. and, you know, being exposed to different vegetables. So I it's think very diverse. Yeah. yeah, it's and I think a one point that you made, which really like opened my eyes to, again, just our relationship with food or how we experience food here or how I would say some maybe most of us have is there was no kind of like, oh, you shouldn't eat this or you shouldn't eat that. If anything, there was something about like, with the dentists and it was like oh don't eat sweets because you got cavities but it wasn't like oh you should watch out for like cholesterol or 
Yeah, there was no actual real like the, hard and forced restrictions to certain things. Yeah. The most I can remember is like mm -hmm. eat brown rice, eat brown, you know, like whole grain bread. Mm -hmm. But that's so kind of like generic. I know. You know what I mean? <laughs> like why? Just because like, it's, why? brown is better, everyone. I used to think that the like white bread, the outside was like the healthiest part. Oh my God. Part. Yeah. Yeah. I, but yes. it's just the burnt part. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? Any like yeah. all millennials and I'm sure people before us would know that. Yeah. Like I yeah. distinctly remember this wasn't here, but it was in um my my elementary school in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Like my teacher told us this story about like two inmates in jail and like uh -huh. one would like they would trade the bread. One would give his crust to the other one and the other, <laughs> the other one would give like the middle part. And he said like, oh, the one that ate the crusts live longer and i'm like now i'm just like that was such a crock like such right a blatant lie because it's just we literally pull up that research right? <laughs> it's literally all bread yeah oh my goodness conspiracy i know <laughs> i wonder if people still teach that because that that was a widespread thing yeah i don't think so you know i mean back in the day like there was you know they were so against fat like yeah. there was this big thing about anti-fat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they're like fat makes you fat but that's yeah. not necessarily true it depends on the kind of fat so yeah. i think with you know the internet obviously mm -hmm. we are learning more mm -hmm. there's more studies and people are more savvy about the actual nutrition facts yeah i think maybe it was because they didn't want us to waste food yeah oh that was definitely a yeah. thing too like my dad well i remember my dad used to make us drink like a whole glass of milk wow. and he would make us eat like liver wow yeah <laughs> and we couldn't leave the table oh my god we ate it like he's i think he fed us fish eyes once wow like, yeah, he, I guess he made us adventurous eaters, but like, yeah. I, I was like, wow, dad, that's really forward thinking because mm -hmm. like liver is really healthy for you, actually. And I mean, milk is debatable. <laughs> if we really need it. We can yes. get calcium in other ways, but our parents tried the best they could. But oh, yeah, we just... were in the age of like Dunkaroos and like... Ugh, Lunchables. Yeah, exactly. Those are delicious. Yeah. Or maybe they weren't as delicious. We just thought that they were. Because I, tr I recently had like... Because bagel bites were my thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Like the 85 yes. pack, give it to me. Oh, yeah. that's all mine. Mm -hmm. um, but I had it recently unless like they changed the formula. Yeah. It's not as good. <laughs> yeah, you gotta bake them. <laughs> Regardless, like yeah. they were just, they weren't, like they were, they had no taste. A lot of bread. Yeah, it was mostly bagel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's mostly bagel. Yeah. Remember when eggs were a bad thing? Right. Like eggs were, like, yeah, like, oh, eggs are really bad. You can't, yeah. or only eat the egg white. Yeah. And then now I just recently found out that the, seven or eight grams of protein that are in an egg like a big part of that is the yolk <laughs> yeah yeah so, that got debunked i guess i know it's it's crazy you can't believe anything bread i know there's a lot of competing views yeah. so even today i'm mm -hmm. like still confused yes there's different opinions yes. so you kind of have to just try to stick with like knowledge you know like research-based mm -hmm. information and that's hard to find as well so yes at the end of the day nutrition is so unique to each person mm -hmm. that's like the bottom line yeah. so like eggs kind of don't do well with me but you know my boyfriend loves eggs i love eggs so yeah always they're, yeah they're good for you so it just depends on the person really. yeah absolutely it, it's so much more like tailored than we would like to admit it is like yeah. there's really not a one size i mean of course there's like you know fiber and vegetables all yeah. that stuff but it's but even then like some people just can't digest certain vegetables exactly like, it's crazy yeah. I think one really, um, one really prevalent, and I don't want to say challenge, but I think a unique situation that a lot of us have to work through is that food pretty much throughout the rest of the world, like the rest of the world is so embedded in our culture. It's so embedded in, like you said, so many different kinds of events, like celebrations, uh, funerals, things like that. So we congregate around it and it's very much a sign of a communion for us right. and a sign of it's an act of, of service of love you know so we cook for people when we want to show that we care for them uh it's very much a way for us to not only nurture ourselves physically but nurture ourselves like spiritually mm -hmm. uh and with it holding such a very uh, you know a significant place in a lot of people's minds it 
makes it difficult. Like, have you ever been, have you ever been like on a diet and then you go to someone's like, you know, your auntie's house or something and it's like, yeah. they just shove a plate in your face and you're like, you just, you kind of have to, or you feel, or I feel very obligated to just take it. Cause I'm like, I can't, I can't refuse this <laughs> because it's, 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 um, it's not, I wouldn't say disrespectful, but it's like, I think it hurts their feelings. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know? Because they're yeah. trying to like nurture you. Exactly. Um, And make sure you're, you know, you're fed. And yes. You're, that's a sign of love. But yeah. yes, I've definitely been to mm. many a party yeah. where I'm like trying out, you know, a, a certain eating pattern yeah. or I already ate. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah. And you go and they're like, come get food. Yeah. And you're like, no, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And they ask you like, every Are you minute sick? on the minute right <laughs> yeah. um and it's rude right yes. you don't go up and grab something mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially when i was on like i tried an elimination diet where yeah. i was i was avoiding certain foods for mm -hmm. a certain amount of time and it's hard to explain that you know yeah to, like your auntie or whatever so you do kind of end up getting food but something else that i've realized since you know trying to make healthier eating habits is mm -hmm. like I would bring, say, like a salad to a barbecue or yeah. to like a family event. And, you know, it's really for me to mm -hmm. have like a non-carb or something to as a side to yeah. eat or, and also to offer to others just to have something green on the yeah. table, you know. <laughs> but I have gotten like judged for like, oh, bring the salad. Yeah. Like, oh, are you on a diet? Mm -hmm. You know, whenever someone says that, it's like a negative connotation. Like, oh, yeah. what are you on a diet? Like, you're already skinny. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's like, no, I'm just trying to eat healthier. Yeah. And so I feel like as a community, we mm -hmm. really need to encourage, like, encourage people and yes. not judge them for like trying to have healthier habits yeah. or for bringing the salad to the party. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. like, don't poke fun at them because yeah. it's hard enough to make these changes and habits. Mm -hmm. And instead of not showing up to the party, you know, yeah. you try to bring something that you can eat. Yeah. In the episode I did with Sammy, we were talking about betel nut. In her, in her research, she found that, you know, people who are trying to give up betel nut, mm -hmm. they get, they some, they often get like negative responses from people. The exact sure. same thing, like, oh, what, you know, you're not, you're not going to quit. Like, you're right. going to be chewing the next morning, that kind of thing. And it's not necessarily, it's definitely detrimental to that person's efforts to quit, but... Mm -hmm. It's not, or a lot of the times, it's not necessarily something that's meant to be, uh, like, overtly discouraging. Or, I mean, it is overtly discouraging. Yeah. But it's, like, <laughs> it's a response to, the like, you are it being perceived that you're taking away, like, a, a common thread between the two of you. Right. You know, so it's, like, yeah. oh, if you're on a diet, then we can't, we can't commune together. Like, we can't be together anymore because... Yeah. This is separating us mm -hmm. and we can't partake in something that we used to love doing together. Yeah. So it's again, it's like this very interesting perspective because initially it's not or like at the heart of it, I don't think it is something that's meant to be like, oh, we hate healthy food. Yeah, yeah. It's more so like, why are we why are we uh, why are we being separated? You know, right. why are we building? Why are we? Um, putting this barrier between or why are you putting this barrier between <laughs> us you know but uh, I, I don't think it's a barrier until you yeah. make it one exactly right? there's a yeah, full yeah. table like you mm -hmm. either grab the salad or you don't yeah. and it's not nobody's judging anyone mm -hmm. whether you eat it or not yeah um so yeah i guess like just make it a normal thing right like yeah or like i think it's very important to like i guess point out that Oh, it doesn't mean that we can't eat together, but we're just going to be eating. We're, we're experiencing, we can experience something different together. You know sure. what I mean? Like I can try bringing something that we both, yeah. <laughs> we both will like. I mean, maybe they yeah. would like it, right? Yeah. Like you never know. You can exactly. try it. And it doesn't mean that you bring a salad and you're just going to eat the salad. Yeah. Like I, it's like you want some greens mm -hmm. and then you eat the barbecue yeah. and, you know, instead of rice, maybe, maybe you're trying to cut down on your carbs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. It's just something that I kind of noticed, yeah. and I think it's discouraging to people who are trying to make changes For sure. to their lifestyle. For sure. Yeah, because then maybe next time they're like, I'm just not going to go to mm -hmm. the party because I don't want to get judged for not eating. <laughs> or, But, you know, as far as the, like, 
please go eat, please go eat. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a loving thing. It is. It, it, yeah. That's why it's so hard to be not refuse it, but mm -hmm. kind of like have to explain all of these reasons yeah. as to why you're not going to, because you know it's not something, again, that's that's trying to work yeah, against you. Yeah, they're trying you. to show you love. Right? Yeah. For sure. No, I always go and get the food. Yeah. Like, even like, if it's a little bit, dee -dee even if you're just like, <laughs> you know, one piece little. of chicken. Yeah, we got that. Yeah. I think it's very interesting, too, because, you know, when we're talking about going to parties, we're talking about eating, you know, party food. Mm -hmm. I think or yeah, I'm, I think this is not a fact. I'm just like this is a personal observation and an opinion, a theory <laughs> that, you know, our because the, the topic of this particular episode, or at least the beginning of it is, mm -hmm. like I said, pre-colonial indigenous diets. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of our like what we consider to be like local local food, if you don't count like the fried chicken and like, you know, the tempera, that's yeah. That's just like batter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say a lot of what we eat initially is actually pretty healthy. Like, you know, mm -hmm. the coconuts, um, fish, all these things. And it really depends on the way you prepare it. Yeah. That makes it a little bit more like calorie dense mm -hmm. and, you know, a little bit more heavy on on certain substances that you don't necessarily need excesses of in your sure. body. Uh, and it, I think it's very interesting to think about, you know, because we were talking we were discussing how, you know, we're so much more health con conscious now. There's so much more information on what we should be eating or what could possibly benefit our our lifestyles, our, our bodies, our, our families, that kind of thing. When we look back to before we were influenced by the outside world, like I've, I've seen like descriptions. There was a clip that I posted on the on our socials that was asking like, oh, what does a what does a full tomorrow look like? You know, what is that? What is a pure blooded, just like lady of the land tomorrow look like? <laughs> yeah. And someone, uh, a Micronesian mermaid, hey, uh, <laughs> shout out to you. But she posted something about how like the, I guess like the Spanish, how they how we first looked to them. And um, it was something along the lines of like we were really tall. We were like six feet um, and very, very fit. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we obviously didn't have, or I mean, not obviously, I just, I can assume that we didn't have, we didn't have problems accessing nutrition, like nutritious foods, you know, right. a lot of it is again, like fish, um, root vegetables, those right. kinds of things, coconuts. Mm -hmm. So we were able to get what we needed and, and be nourished in ways that really helped us with what we needed to do. That's another thing because, yeah. you know, ancient Chamorros were doing a lot more <laughs> than we Absolutely. than we are doing today. You know, we're not building our houses with our hands. Yeah. So it's just interesting to look at that parallel because we originally are a very, uh, I, would, I would just say for lack of a better term, fit people, mm -hmm. you know, or that's what we originated as. And then once we got more influenced by outside forces and then um and we were introduced to other substances like flour right you know right we, we don't have wheat here <laughs> like, no. yeah so all of these other things and then l looking uh looking at us today and looking at this the specific um problems that we face it's just it's a it's an interesting progression to see mm -hmm. and then it's kind of like because it, again like it's not like those foods are not necessarily accessible to us right it's still very accessible to us but then again, I think one big thing to consider is also the, the convenience factor. Sure. You know, we're not doing the same things. Yeah. We are driving our kids to school. We are, I don't know, running businesses, things like that, where our attention is like 99% on something else. And like for a lot of people, uh, like what we eat is just thrown on the back burner. Like what's the fastest thing I throw in the microwave and pop right. in my mouth? I mean, with that being said, I think I would like to not necessarily go back, but like find a way which I think is what I'm doing a lot with this podcast is kind yeah. of like, like building bridges between the past and the present mm -hmm. and hopefully finding ways in which we can get in touch with that again. Sure. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do that. Yeah. The Garapan public market is amazing. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. I love going there. It's I, I, I definitely need to shop there more. Yeah. yeah. Support the farmers. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Two things that I'm hearing from that mm -hmm. is that the lifestyle was totally different. Yeah. They yeah. were outside. There was no air con mm -hmm. and concrete buildings and desk jobs. Mm -hmm. And they were outside literally working for everything that they had. They yeah. had to build their homes. They mm -hmm. had to fish for their food, they yeah. had to grow their vegetables. 
They had to walk long miles every day. Oh, yeah. They were always physically active. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. they were burning a lot of calories. Mm-hmm. And then uh, even if they ate a whole probably bag of sweet potatoes, they'll probably Esto burn it sweet. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow. That's one thing I noticed, like being in the Northern Islands, mm-hmm. like we were even just to go shower, you got to like carry your five gallon or, you know, like wow. carry your water to the shower. Yeah. Everything that you did what you were sweating for right and you're outside all day yeah so i mean just even that little snippet of life was like okay i'm exhausted right like (laughs) just taking a shower just go shower (laughs) yeah everything you do like you walk to the bathroom or you Mm -hmm. know you go find a spot it's far you walk everywhere and you're hiking and you're you know so everything takes a lot of energy so Mm -hmm. you're burning a lot of energy you're basically working out all day every day So there's that. And then the other thing as far as food is that they were eating whole foods. That's true. No processed. No processed foods. No canned. Genetically modified, like, you know, full of sugar. But yeah, so they were closer to the food, Mm -hmm. right? They caught the fish. They grew the root vegetables. It was very much farm to table. Exactly. And I think if we want to get back to that, it's definitely a lifestyle change. Mm -hmm. We need to be more physically active, whether that's going for a walk after a meal, Mm -hmm. playing a sport, just anything to be more active, farming, Mm -hmm. right? You're sweating. Oh, good Lord. You know, make your own little garden. Then we're like cutting out the like big food industrial system and we're closer to our foods, trying to eat more whole foods versus, you know, convenient Mm -hmm. packaged food obviously would be, you know, huge. Yes. If we're actually cooking our food, it's going to be healthier because you're more aware of how much salt you're putting Mm -hmm. and how much, you know, sugar versus eating out. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's all about time and lifestyle. So like how much time are you putting into your food? Yeah. Are you preparing it or is it a convenience thing? And it's going to be, you know, nobody's perfect with this lifestyle. We're always on the go. We're so busy. I think it's a balance of both. You know, convenient foods are nice, Mm -hmm. right? We're not growing our own rice. We're picking it up at the store. <laughs> yes. But, you know, having a balance of that. Mm-hmm. And then, like you said, supporting our local market, you know, um, eating fresh as much as you can. Yes. Cooking at home. Garapai yeah. Market, sponsor us. <laughs> yeah. We should, like, yeah. they need sponsorship, that's true, right? That's true. They work hard, People, those farmers. Yeah, please go and find, uh, every time I go there, it's just, it's such like, I'm literally a kid in a candy store. Yeah. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I want to buy everything. The exactly. avocados. Oh my gosh! I mm-hmm. that I sweep up. I, Absolutely, I buy all of them. But I try to go there and support because I really appreciate anyone that's still farming. Yeah, and, you know all the effort that goes into growing these foods. Absolutely. Yeah, and eating well, like in today's world, is very much. It needs to be like a thoughtful thing. Sure. And anyone, anyone who doesn't have like access to like a personal chef needs to actually have it be something that is planned out or just you know well thought out in order for it to actually you know help sustain you in a way that is beneficial and healthy Mm -hmm. so yeah i I definitely agree it's definitely a lifestyle change it's something that is not necessarily going to because even if we did have all those options we do have a lot of options you know we do have a lot of healthy options but i know a lot of people who don't want to give up or not give up per se, but like every meal needs to have some kind of meat in it. You know what I mean? Like every meal. So it's, which is not bad. I'm not saying that's bad, but like, you know, you, if, uh, if all you have is, you know, you have vegetables in the fridge, but you don't have meat to to put with it. It is very much a a switching of that perspective of like, okay, maybe I can just have stir fried vegetables. And I know it doesn't sound, well, I mean, I think it sounds good, but I'm sure a lot of people are like, what? It's not that we, or at least I, in theory, it's not necessarily that we don't have food that is healthy, but rather we're accustomed to certain ways of preparing and mm-hmm. consuming that food. I think it's also important to point out that, you know, there's different income levels. Yeah, yeah. So like, say, a you know, a low income family mm-hmm. that has many children that yeah. they need to feed every child like they need to feed the whole family absolutely so they're thinking okay what what can satisfy like my whole family Mm -hmm. i started we 670 back in the summer of 2017 and over the past six years one thing has become abundantly clear i need to hire staff 
I was a lot younger when I started this journey and didn't really mind being a one-man show at the time. But now that I've learned the ins and outs of producing content on a semi-regular basis, I am left utterly exhausted and I need pupils from the next generation to take over some of the tasks in the studio so that I can rest my back. It's an exciting new progression in the story of We 670, but it's also something that I am taking very seriously. Above all else, I intend to facilitate a safe and supportive working environment for both myself and my future employees. And I can't think of anyone better to help me do that than Pacifica Insurance Underwriters. They offer small to large commercial group health insurance plans tailored to meet the needs of your entire group membership and cover a variety of essential services such as preventive care, eye exams, mental health services, physician office visits, emergency care, and more. With partnering health insurers that guarantee the broadest global network and access to reliable providers at almost all corners of the globe, I can rest assured my health and that of my employees will be in great hands. It's an absolutely necessary step to ensure that both myself and my business can continue to grow and thrive. And I'm so glad that Pacifica Insurance Underwriters is here to help me level up. If you are interested in learning about the many ways in which Pacifica Insurance Underwriters can help to support your growth and expansion, visit their website at www.pacificains.com, their Instagram at Pacifica Insurance, or their Facebook at facebook.com slash Pacifica Insurance Underwriters. Your personal journey right now in your pursuit in furthering your education, your master's, what factors led up to you pursuing this particular field? Yeah, so I never would have thought like healthcare was the route I'd take. Mm -hmm. It really wasn't until more recently, I guess around 2020, when I really started looking into nutrition and I started sort of like my own personal health journey. I have like adult acne, mm -hmm. so it kind of got worse in my 20s, which was like, why, right? <laughs> like I thought it was past <laughs> yeah. puberty, like why do I still have like breakouts all over my chin? Mm -hmm. And I think it had, you know, obviously a lot to do with, I was on hormone, like artificial hormones, mm -hmm. AKA birth control. Yeah. Um, and I think that kind of messed up my body and my hormones so I was getting like hormonal acne and I was you know buying all the creams and potions and trying everything and nothing was working I had this thought where I was like wait maybe it's something inside mm -hmm. that's telling me through my skin like hey something's not right yeah right so I started to look at nutrition I started to doing it or started to look at an inside out approach mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and I started you know with podcasts and like reading okay. books. <laughs> yeah, so many good podcasts, mm -hmm. honestly, that I still love to binge on today. Mm -hmm. um, and I started like really falling in love with nutrition and the idea of food as medicine. Mm -hmm. You are what you eat. Exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Mm -hmm. You are what you eat. I just was like falling in love with everything I was learning and I would like tell it to anyone who would listen like oh my god yeah, mom did I you remember. know that this and that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> i know people start getting yeah. annoyed with me like okay even my boyfriend i'd be like let's try this like <laughs> let's try eliminating this and yeah. he's like oh uh, <laughs> you could do, you that. Could do that yeah I just put Don't it on mess my plate. with my food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I just really started falling in love with it for myself, for mm. my, you know, personal growth and my own knowledge. Cut to like a few years later, I was kind of just, I never really considered it as a career. But then I started thinking like, man, I love this so much. Like yeah. maybe I can make this a career. Mm -hmm. And so I started looking into like careers in nutrition and you know, programs. And so it kind of just all led me to here where um, I'm getting my master's in nutrition, dietetics. So yeah, that was really how it all fell into place. I just really like fell in love with nutrition, mm -hmm. functional medicine, food is medicine. And I just wanted to be able to share it with our community. And like, mm -hmm. I got so excited because, you know, our community suffers from so many chronic mm -hmm. diseases. Yes. And it all has to do with food, mm -hmm. right? And or a lot of it does. <laughs> pretty much all of yeah. it, I would argue, right? So like yeah. it all stems back to food because what is like, what do we put in our body every day? Yeah. It's food, right? Mm -hmm. 
it definitely has a major role and so i wanted to everything i was learning i was like wow this is like gold yes and i wanted to be able to share it mm -hmm. but i wanted to be more of an expert in what i'm talking about mm -hmm. so i looked into school and now i'm pursuing my masters and i'm really excited i really feel like this is what i'm passionate about this is what i want to help our community with mm -hmm. and i can't wait to jump into the program at the end of the month oh yeah right and and start really learning and just I'm yeah excited. putting putting what you learn to practice exactly yeah. i really want to help our community and just make nutrition more fun more approachable mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. for our peers you know when you're young you don't think about it because you're no. like oh i'm indestructible <laughs> yes. like i can just drink every night mm -hmm. and, and you know we boy did there. i <laughs> <laughs> you know, and eat McDonald's yeah. after, and then you know you hit, yeah. you hit an age where you're like, wait, that age that's not the pounds ain't falling off anymore, right? Right? Yeah. Uh, but mostly it's about health. I yeah. want to age gracefully. I mm. want I, I'm more aware of like diseases, and you know, a lot of our peers are you know getting cancer mm -hmm. or yeah, you know like true. falling ill and. Mm -hmm. It really makes you think. For sure. I mean, COVID. Exactly. <laughs> like, yes. Perfect. Nothing example. is going to take me down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was actually in COVID when I started yeah. all of this, like looking into nutrition. That's so. so interesting that it's it stemmed from something that was, I don't know if little is the world is the word, but very like surface level, which says, oh, my skin is not looking the way I want it to be. Mm -hmm. And then it opened up this incredible, like this, this whole new world of understanding you know how you relate to it and how you right. exist in it which mm -hmm. is something i think a lot of people just don't really again food is very much an afterthought it's something so mm -hmm. instinctual that you don't actually think uh about the process of it and what it actually does because we do it so often sure. so can i ask you you know in the beginning not necessarily when you already decided to pursue your degree but when you started falling in love with everything everything new that you were learning what were some of the biggest or the most significant changes that you implemented in your life like what was the biggest before and after with you yeah so i mean i still mm -hmm. suffer from acne yeah. i still <laughs> haven't gotten it down yeah. i'm still balancing my hormones it's mm -hmm. such it's a long long term yeah goal right it's a it's a long game mm -hmm. it's not a sprint yes so um and you know like i said like we were talking about nutrition is so uh, personal mm -hmm. it's not a one size fits all mm -hmm. so you kind of have to play with your diet and mm -hmm. see and so i've i've done a bunch of different like i don't like to say diet because people are like oh diet yeah. you're restrict <laughs> yeah. you're restricting yourself Oops. you know like i would yeah. do like an elimination diet which mm -hmm. is you you remove all kinds of like triggers yes and then you slowly you know you give yourself a week or two to like kind of get it out of your system then mm -hmm. you slowly start introducing foods yeah. one at a time and see how your body reacts to it mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. that's kind of how i found out like dairy is not my friend right it's hardly anyone's friend yeah <laughs> it was actually my boyfriend who was yeah. like we would go out and eat pizza and stuff mm -hmm. and i'd be like oh man i have a stomach ache mm -hmm. and he's like I think you're lactose intolerant and i'm like in denial no it's not i'm not it's not because i love cheese my know, favorite dessert cheese. is ice cream right oh, so ice cream i know i still mm -hmm. eat it i still like just i'll be at home yeah <laughs> i know for the yeah, aftermath. It's, it's home food <laughs> yeah we're all like have a slice of pizza versus yeah. like i could eat probably half four or five <laughs> Standard. right it's easy <laughs> right and i don't want to be like oh i'm yeah i'm such a healthy eater mm -hmm. like i don't eat junk food no i'm i'm working on myself every day yeah. it's still a process you know it's not a linear path mm -hmm. like you eat healthy and then maybe you fall off and you go out and you have some pizza or you go for mcdonald's yeah i think the important thing is just not to beat yourself up about it and just yeah. Because then there's Carry very on. there's very few things that you actually should absolutely not eat unless you're allergic or you have like some kind of chronic illness right, <laughs> that would right. exacerbate. True. But I mean, like it's fine to have, and I think that's the thing where there's a really prevalent attitude that I see amongst a lot of people where it's like, oh, it's all or nothing. You know right. what I mean? Like yeah. it's I have to com just completely. Uh, banish this stuff from my life, yeah. and that definitely works for some people, but a lot of us can't function that way and it's like not realistic yeah and, and yeah. if once you 
let you let yourself like taste a little bit you're like mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> you're just uh out of control then right. which is natural you know mm-hmm. so yeah I think I, everything in moderation mm-hmm. right and i think if you're eating primarily healthy on most of the week yeah. and you know and then you have like the weekend and i don't really want to say cheat meal because it's yeah. it seems like it treat seems very meal. Yeah. a treat meal well, like adding it into your lifestyle yeah. it's changing habits is so hard so it is it's, every day is a battle right yes but especially food oh my yeah. god oh my god yeah but and you know like here there's not so much to do so mm-hmm. what do we go to socialize we are go you to hungry the bar, right? no yeah we do you want to go restaurant, eat restaurant <laughs> which we'll probably do after this yes right? that's exactly <laughs> um it's definitely a social thing like we yeah. just talked about mm-hmm. and yeah, it's a work in progress for everyone, including myself. For sure. And it's and it's definitely something that you that can, like, as you said, that can be very exciting. It doesn't have to be about restriction necessarily, but also it can be about adding new things, you know, like, yeah. oh, I don't I, I've never tried this vegetable before, exactly. you know, or I've never tried cooking my meat this way before. Right. Experiment, like go to a restaurant and think and like look for something that you've never tried before and then see how you can incorporate or that's another great thing like find yeah. things that you love and and find ways to like make it better right. <laughs> or healthier I think one thing I did notice when I was like working on different diets or mm. you know was that it was really hard to eat out oh yeah <laughs> there's not that many mm-hmm. healthy options mm-hmm. or there's like two salads or yeah. one salad if you're lucky mm-hmm. Um, I wish that would change. Yeah. Of course, that comes with like change or a demand from the yeah, customers. Yeah, demand for right? health. Like, yeah. yeah. Eating in was like playing around with vegetables mm-hmm. and how do you like that? And yeah. definitely was fun. And I, I'm really not the best cook, to be honest. I, you know, I'm still learning. I'm not horrible, but I'm not like. <laughs> you won't spit my I, food I out. I don't call myself a chef. Let's put it that way. <laughs> you don't need to be a chef. That's why you should watch Nigella. She'll make it. She'll make it very enjoyable See, for you. See, but the beautiful thing about like yeah. healthier foods is mm. that you don't need a lot. You right? don't. Like yeah. it's all about the simplicity. So. And it's also very much about, um, like I realized this recently because my favorite chef or my favorite cook she's not a chef she'll say that but like nigella nigella lawson like she doesn't make necessarily healthy food or like she doesn't just stick to certain kinds of cuisine like she'll make something really really calorie dense and then you know make a salad the next thing but it's Mm -hmm. not it's never a a a predetermined thing and she she eats everything pretty much that she wants and Mm -hmm. she doesn't balloon up and i'm like how does she do that and i'm like oh wait she like makes when she cooks like for herself like just mm-hmm. by herself she makes just enough for that one like for one serving like one plate of pasta right. you know she'll make just that and she won't cook like the whole bag right. you know what i mean so i'm like oh that sounds that's so against my nature but i mean it really would work if you actually just made enough to eat what because remember sure. last night okay yeah we expose ourselves but like remember last night we were eating and like oh my god i kind of want to go and get something else after this right i actually was okay like by the end of the night because i was like oh i just I, I let it sit for maybe like 15 minutes i'm like yeah. oh i'm actually not starving right. anymore just drink a, a little bit of water yeah and and i was like, like i'm not hungry. yeah it's just it's funny it's i've noticed too like with myself i kind of like changed my plate mm, mm-hmm. so you know like the standard u.s like plate. oh it's huge yeah dinner plate serving so, platter like you feel like you need to fill yeah. that up or we you don't accidentally get a bigger portion than you probably would have mm-hmm. if you notice japanese they have like their little bowls of oh everything, yeah right yeah. i think that really helps with, it like, does portioning is having a smaller plate mm-hmm. or a couple small bowls of yes. food, like especially for rice. Yeah, you know, like the little Japanese bowl. Mm-hmm. If you put it in there, it's like okay, that's a good serving. That's what if you I put have. it on a big plate, you want to like fill up half. <laughs> it's like challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Watch me. <laughs> <laughs> or at least for me, like psychologically, yeah, because when I see a plate and it's like there's like empty space in it, yeah. I'm like. It shouldn't be empty. Like, yeah, I, think I should not be able to see the plate, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or just the edges, right. <laughs> just the edges of the plate. I should be able yeah. to see. So yeah, it's it's a, it's like I said, it's a very thoughtful thing. It's a very meant like a uh, an informed decision that you need to make mm-hmm. in order to eat healthy in any instance. Mm-hmm. What do you hope to achieve or contribute once you once you graduate and you're able to really 
like laid out there. <laughs> um, what are you hoping to contribute or achieve with that knowledge? Well, I'm not sure exactly where mm. I want to take it. Yeah. I think through the program and through my internship at CHC, it'll help me like be exposed to the different career paths, mm -hmm. I guess. Or how you can apply it. Exactly. Yeah. So the end goal is to become a registered dietitian, mm -hmm. right? And I see myself hopefully working at the hospital and I feel like that's, you know, how I can make an impact on our community. I can either try to work in clinical and, you know, help patients with their food protocol or, you know, do community outreach mm -hmm. and kind of more information based. So I'm not sure yet, mm -hmm. but I definitely feel like, you know, what kind of got me here was my passion for sharing information, right? Yes. I wanted, I was finding out all this information for myself and was really excited about it. And I wanted it to be more approachable, more understandable to our peers. So ultimately, I guess that's my goal to so just get the information out there and hopefully make a movement of like healthier eating mm. within the Marianas. Wonderful. You're going to open your own podcast? You start your own your own healthy I podcast. I like played with the idea of an Instagram. I don't know about the whole podcast. I could yeah. join in with you maybe. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Do meal meal preps, yeah. meal plans for our people. Yes. Yeah, I I mean maybe eventually I'll start an Instagram mm -hmm. and kind of just share, you know, Fantastic. different information or different recipes mm -hmm. that I come upon. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I feel like if it's again in terms of accessibility if like oh the recipe is here and i know exactly like what to get and where to get it like mm -hmm. it's so much easier to one less thing you have to check off in your mind like oh what am i gonna make as opposed to yeah. being like okay like mm -hmm. what is there to do with like a clove of garlic and a can of whatever <laughs> yeah i follow yeah. this instagram youtuber mm -hmm. influencer his name is bobby flay he has flave city is his handle are you talking about the chef from food oh, sorry. network not bobby flay but his name is Bobby. Okay. And like, it's Flav City is his oh, Instagram. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. I know. I was like, from I, Iron yeah. Chef America? <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about yeah. now. His name is Bobby. Oh, Bobby Parrish is his okay, name. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, okay. Bobby Flay just rolls off the tongue real nice. I know. <laughs> but um, he basically goes through the, through the grocery store and mm -hmm. he like kind of helps you navigate oh, the yeah, aisles, love it, love it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So he'll like pick up a box of pasta and mm -hmm. be like, okay, this, you know, the ingredient list is so crazy. And like, there's always, yeah. you know, usually words that you can't pronounce mm -hmm. and you don't know what it is. Yeah. And so he kind of helps decode that. And I think that's so useful. I really love watching his um, reels mm -hmm, and his mm -hmm. videos because it just kind of helps you see like out of all the pastas, mm -hmm. this one's probably your best choice yeah. because of these ingredients. Mm -hmm. And this one has this ingredient that you might want to avoid. Yeah, I think s something along that line too would be really interesting because we definitely need to learn how to read labels better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't I, think that we do that enough. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Or I do... Um, like if I want to... Do I read labels? I'm sure you do, but maybe not do. like the first three. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, no cancer. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm like the least, like the the shorter the ingredients list is, the better. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's like if you can pronounce all like the this. ingredients, that's the best. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this next question is doesn't necessarily have to be like a concrete vision. It could be somewhat idealistic, mm -hmm. but I would love to know if you have any visions of what the what the Marianas could be, could be in this in terms of this field. Mm -hmm. um, but if you just have a general idea of, of, of where we could be like in the next 10 years or where you hope us to be in the next 10 years or what potential you see, like what seeds you see being planted as of today that could grow into something possibly very significant in the future. Mm -hmm. Is there anything like that for you at this point? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. I hope that we can become more uh, self-reliant mm. with our food supply. Yes. Just COVID itself, you know, everything shut down. Mm -hmm. Imports weren't coming in. And we're like, what are we going to, you know, yeah. what are we going to eat? Mm -hmm. And that's scary because, you know, with this, our modern world, like you never know when another COVID or something similar will happen. And we are so remote. Mm -hmm. So I think we really need to start thinking about food security. Yes. And 
along with that is just it supports our economy, you know, and it's more farm to table, right? Mm -hmm. So it's less processed, it's more whole foods. So I do hope in the future that we can be, you know, more self-reliant and producing more vegetables um, that can at least feed our communities. Mm -hmm. Hopefully have like grass fed beef or have, you know, have local beef Mm -hmm. more available. Yeah. And I think... I don't know. I'm not going to say if we can or cannot because I don't I'm not an expert. So, yes, thank you. <laughs> I think it's achievable. Hopefully, yeah. Right. Like I think yeah, we do have a lot of potential to see those things through. For sure. Yeah. I don't have any anything to say about how we're going to do that. But I, I think we I definitely Support believe that farmers. we can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, Lei, uh, a goal of this podcast and really we six seventy in general in this iteration is to unite all of our brothers and sisters of the Marianas, whether they be indigenous, local, community members, visitors, just any, all of us who have connections to this place and to its people. I really want to unite all of us through a sense of pride and just uh, ec- excitement and hope. And what words did I put here? <laughs> and empowerment. There we go. Empowerment. Do you have a message for our audience that aligns with that? Can you tell them something, piece of advice, or just anything that can encourage our people? Um, Don't eat gluten. <laughs> <laughs> Vegan all the way. <laughs> no, okay. I, I do think protein's important. Yeah. <laughs> animal protein. Okay, animal. Yeah, eat no. the animals. Eat I the guess, animals. I would say, you know, if you've been thinking about Uh, making healthier changes to your diet or just overall healthier habits. Um, Don't be discouraged. Take baby steps. It feels overwhelming, but baby steps every day turns into something huge. Mm -hmm. So don't be discouraged and um, support your friends who are trying to make Right. Better. Better um, help. Better life. Life choices. Yeah. Health choices. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. This was a very enriching conversation. Would you like to let people know where they can reach you socially, spiritually? (laughs) I mean, you don't have to. (laughs) Um, Yeah. You can reach me on Instagram at Cranes X Coconuts. Before we sign off, we would like to once again thank the sponsor of this episode, Pacifica Insurance Underwriters please head over to their website, www.pacificains.com, their Instagram at Pacifica Insurance, and their Facebook at facebook.com slash Pacifica Insurance Underwriters to learn about the many, many ways that they can help to insure you and your peace of mind. They have been in the game since 1973. Their 50th anniversary is fast approaching, so they know what they're doing and you will be in very good, capable hands. Thank you again to Pacifica Insurance Underwriters for helping us to create this content for you. And if you would like more We670 content, you can find us on Instagram at We670IG, on TikTok at We670TT, youtube.com slash We670. And if you are feeling generous, if you want to help us pay our bills and help us to produce more exciting, hard-hitting We670 content, please visit patreon.com slash We670. You will gain access to, well, along with supporting us, you will also gain access to a lot of bonus exclusive content that is only available to our patrons, like the after show, which we will be filming right after this. So definitely head over there and check that out. And Give us donations. (laughs) Support the cause. Yeah, support the cause. As always, everyone, thank you so much for listening. I am so glad that you have chosen to be on this journey with us. And I am very excited for everything else we have yet to learn and discover together. Until next time, I always always mess this up. Until (laughs) next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye. Bye.